Hey everyone, it's uh, Nathan from Geometry Gym here. I just wanted to quickly go through today a script I've been developing uh, recently, which uh, can help you start, um, use Rhino as a, as a bit of a sketchboard to start to scheme um, buildings for structural analysis. Um, today I'm gonna, we're gonna try and start developing a, an ETABS model similar to this one, um, where we can uh, change the building form change the core geometry as well as wall and, and, and some column geometry which has been based off um, referencing Rhino geometry. You may get a, um, a PDF CAD or um, some other format from an architect which you want to be using as, as a background, particularly um, some engineers might start to use PDF sketching tools or whatever but I'm going to show you how you can start to use Rhino uh, and Grasshopper to automatically um, generate these ETABS models. So you can see that this Grasshopper script isn't actually really that complex and I find that when I'm using uh, or, or referencing or using referencing from Rhino uh, you can start to create more layers uh, which will in turn reduce the complexity that can sometimes occur in these, um, in these Grasshopper scripts. So what I'm going to do quickly is um, show you the output of, of, of the walls and, and how I've set these up in, in Rhino and, and Grasshopper. So I'm basically using a geometry pipeline um, or, or a bunch of geometry pipeline components. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of, of layers set up as well. Um, so I've got one for the building outline. Um, I've got one for um, grids in the X direction with a wall. Um, I've got I've got ones for um, grids in the Y direction with um, walls. And for this particular um, scheme, if I just turn that back on, for t for this particular scheme, um, most grid lines are going to have a wall on either side of the um, building envelope. Um, there are some instances where I will want a wall uh, within the building envelope on one of those grid lines. So I've, I've designated them as two separate layers. So I've got grid X wall, um, start end, um, grid X wall, middle, and then grid Y wall, S um, start end, basically. I've also got a couple of different uh, uh, lines which I'm which I want to place columns at the intersections of. So I'm, I'm bringing those in as well as columns X um, or grids X and columns and grid Y columns. So what I want to do there is place columns at those, um, at those intersections. Just because I like to make sure that when I do um, import grids, I do want to make sure that they are sorted in some type of direction. So if I actually do want to grab one of those, um, when I reopen up Grasshopper, it's not it's not resorting them in, in, in some weird way that might break my script in the, in the future. The last part of this is the uh, core geometry and um, the way we've set this up. So. Um, you can see here, if I look at the core here, um, I can start to position this, this point um, and this sort of designates the location of my core. Um, I've drawn another group of lines over here, um, which I can start to manipulate if I want to, to start to change the core geometry or, or whatever I'd like to do um, as I start to, to test. So. Uh, that's represented on a on another layer called core geometry, and the point is called the core position. Um, and then when I import or reference that um, geometry, I can start to choose. Uh, if I just select it, I can start to choose if I want to, you know, how I want to rotate that core about that about that particular point as well. So the powerful thing about this, um, especially using Rhino reference geometry, um, is we can start to uh, scheme a building, I guess, um, based on based on um, a couple of these different parameters um, and walls. So I could I could copy this line, 
uh, and place another one in here on that layer, um, and then I get a whole, I get another set of, I get another set of walls or whatever. Um, I can start to move these lines um, how I want and start to get different different wall types as well. Um, and then I can also start to um, move my building geometry uh, and I start to get little bits of and, uh, and updates. So um, I can I could add more middle walls. I could add more, um, I'll just turn it off a sec. I could add more um, columns, column lines um, and start to generate more columns. I'll just see if this works. Um, uh, and so on and at each iteration sending that back to etabs and getting and getting a, a, an understanding on what that's doing um, what that's doing to the to, to the geometry so um, I've set something else up something up here which allows you to basically interact with each of these walls um, on the perimeter so then I might have to um, relocate those so I've, I've basically got a start wall parameter where the, the wall will start. So if you just look at that wall down in the bottom right hand corner, I can modify that. Um, and then as well as the end wall, so I can start to modify where those start, those start and end positions are um, or whatever. So just before I go to the next step, I'm just going to uh, re reposition the core um, to where I slightly want it. I'm just going to reduce this back this this wall back down to uh, more in line with the other with the other core um, section. Um, I might move these walls up a little bit um, and I might move these walls up a uh, and what the other thing what you can do is start to this with the middle walls you can you can also uh, increase or decrease the size of those um, and also the and also the position of those walls. So what I might do is I'll just try and get that position similar to where the core wall is located. So the, where the power of this comes in um, is where you can start to um, generate um, a, a 3D building. So here I've, I've a pretty simple here. I've got a, a number of um, levels, slider component and a height for each of those levels. So if I go back to my perspective view, here's my building which is starting to be built up. So you can see these walls, um, the columns, the core, um, and the you've got a 26 story building. So I can I can start to increase this obviously and make it however many levels I want or I can obviously um, change the height of, of these levels um, or whatever. And this is obviously quite a um, quite simple. Um, you can start to increase the complexity of this group, you know, how, however you need to if you've got different level heights for different different levels in particular or whatever. So once you have the geometry part of it, I'm using the uh, Geometry Gym eTabs um, plugin to generate uh, my eTabs model and eventually send it to eTabs. So it's just a matter of um, you know creating a, a bunch of building stories, um, which I'm um, setting up and naming for with their elevation. Uh, setting the restraints uh, at the base points, uh, retrieving the the core edge curves at the base um, and setting a whole bunch of restraints along that edge as well. If I can see them. I can start to generate my columns as well. So from the column lines um, that we've generated going up the building, I can create um, frame elements and I've got 1500 by 300 wide um, blade columns for instance here and you can see those there. Um, so that's a matter of um, pulling up a, an, an RHS um, profile component, creating the frame property with the material um, and then assigning that to a whole bunch of uh, frames. Um, similar thing with the core walls. I can create a core wall property 
Now for, for here, I've just, I've um, set the thickness uh, of all the walls as 300, but you could um, break those walls up and start to set different thicknesses for different walls um, uh, as, you, as you like. Um, and then similar with the slab. So I've got my slab edge curves, as you can see. And then I've also um, generated a whole bunch of uh, slab um, voids as well, um, interior to those into the interior to those calls, call walls. So once I'm happy with that first run, I can double click on the ETABS bake model. And there you go. This model took about 30 to 40 seconds to um, go into ETABS, um, but that's not too bad considering um, how you might need to, to update and, and change this model or, or, or whatever over, over time. Um, I've also only generated the elements here, but you do have the ability to start to generate loads, um, load combinations, load patterns, um, as well as automate, automate the solver um, from within Grasshopper as well. The last little bit I'm going to show you is um, just how you can chop bits and pieces out of this um, tower to, to sort of generate a more, um, a more architecturally, I guess, um, sculptured building. Um, this is one way you can do it. There's also a multitude of other ways. Um, so, you know, feel free to take this one on board, but as I started to develop it, I thought, I thought there are a lot of other ways to, to also go about it. But what I've done is I've basically brought in another, another curve. Um, or I've drawn another polyline on, on the, um, in the Rhino, in Rhino and reference that, reference that curve in again. Um, and what I've called this curve is chop. So what it's going to do is where this, um, where the chop curve, um, hits the building outline, it's going to create um, another, it's going to chop that section out of the building. Now I can decide at which level I want that chop to occur. So, um, and I'll show you what I mean by going to the perspective view. So by, by um, bringing in that polyline, um, I do some components which basically create another floor plate um, which is, which is um, to the left of the, of the big floor plate. So you can see that it's chopped through um, and now there's another floor plate there. So I can choose at which level I want that floor plate to, um, to now come into play. So if I just zoom out, you can sort of see now at the 17th level, that floor plate goes into play and I can start to, oh. I can start to change how that plays out. And that, that's also including all the walls and columns which are in that location as well. So it's, it, it will take those away and, and it will start to, um, so I can start to modify that chop line as well. So, um, however I please and then it will start to modify those those walls and, and floor plates and and uh, and so on and columns so if I'm if I like where I've chopped the building now I can um, go back to ETA I can go back to my bake component and there you go so now you've got your updated building uh, within ETABS with the, the chop out of the, uh, out of the side <laughs> at your desired level. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to play around with the script, please get in contact with us and we'll be happy to, um, to share it. And I hope you've seen some of the stuff that you can start to um, look at when uh, sketching in Rhino and, and developing 3D geometry that can be linked um, directly to eTabs um, using Grasshopper and Rhino together. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.